Good morning, everyone. My name is Andy Crown, and I'm the product management lead for the healthcare products here inside of Google Cloud. And today we're going to have a lightning conversation about how AI is revolutionizing healthcare. Uh, and to do that, I've got two experts joining me here uh, who work in this space. I have Marcus uh, on my right here, who works at Bayer. Um, you may know Bayer, they're an organization over 160 years old. Uh, Well-known med medicines such as aspirin that are broadly applicable. Uh, and you may have seen the announcement uh, earlier in the week about the partnership Google has with, May uh, with uh, Bayer in the uh, medical imaging space. Uh, and further on the right there, I have Chris from Insmed. Uh, Insmed is a, a newer organization uh, and focus more on sort of narrower um, rare diseases. Um, and what they have in common is that they both use Vertex uh, uh, and the, the AI capabilities to help them with some of their significant business challenges and they've gracefully agreed to share some of this with us today. So we're gonna do this in the form of uh, a conversation. I have four questions that I'm going to ask the two of them uh, and then we'll open up to the floor uh, to see if there's any questions from the floor. Um, so I'm going to start with Marcus. Uh, Marcus, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your role in the company, and perhaps the, the business challenges that you were hoping to address with AI. Sure, happy to do that. Uh, thanks for having me, Andy, and Google team. Um, yeah, my name is Marcus Blank. I work for Bayer Radiology. We at Bayer have the motto, health for all and hunger for none. Um, and clearly, radiology is in the health for all part. Um, and um, through the partnership with Google, that is what we are tackling. Yeah? So the second part of your question, um, Andy, um, what are we tackling actually? Yeah. Um, we, let me give you a number first. 4.2 billion medical imaging exams per year um, worldwide are, are done, are performed. That is a huge number. It's a huge workload for radiologists, radiology staff, and leads to burnout. Um, and anyway, the, the uh, radiology suites are already understaffed. So this is a huge problem. Um, the, the, second, the second number I wanted to share is 40,000. So there are 40,000 diagnostic errors per year worldwide. And that is really a problem. Because we all, in the end, are patients, right? Everybody might need medical attention. Yeah? So it's getting close. It's getting really personal. So, and that's what we actually want to, to tackle. We have built a platform over the past four years together with Google. Um, and actually, we used it in-house first. But um, we thought the, the uh, services that are on the platform might be very valuable for other folks too that can help us in that in that mission yeah so um, what we would like to do we would like like to support the radiologists out there and their staff with tackling that vast amount of data and for that we need apps we need applications we need ai yeah so the platform actually tries to accelerate the way or the, the path from idea to launching a comprehensive medical solution. Yeah? So we all need the brains of Google, we need the brains of Bayer, we need all of your brains too, because we would like to have you on the platform. Yeah? We want to build those AI applications that can support radiologists and actually in the end, ourselves. Yeah? Excellent. Thank you. Um, Chris, how, well, um, same question for you, kind of a little bit of an intro, uh, about, a bit about the company and really what challenge you're facing. Yes, thanks, Andy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Chris Colucci, uh, Vice President of IT at Insmed. We are headquartered in Bridgewater, New Jersey. We are a small emerging biotech, and our focus is to improve the lives of patients with serious and rare diseases. We launched our first drug back in 2018, Aracase, which uh, again treats uh, serious respiratory um, uh, a disease, and we continue to develop new new um, therapies. Um, 
So why AI? Does anyone realize how long it takes to develop a drug? 10 to 15 years, right, on average. And when you look at the cost of, could be $1 billion to $2 billion, that's just astonishing. And, you know, working in a rare disease company with very talented researchers and scientists, our challenge is how can we get products to patients faster that are really, you know, suffering from these terrible diseases? And when we look at, you know, being a small company, we look at AI as that's going to help us jumpstart that process. And we are looking across discovery, development, and commercialization, as well as our enabling functions to really help expedite that from finding, you know, ruling out genes or therapies that aren't going to work earlier, getting them into the drug development process a lot sooner and more efficient. And if you think about if we could shave off weeks, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if we could shave off weeks, that's dramatic improvement to the patient, which is our North Star. And of course, commercialization, if we could accelerate the uptake and getting out to the market and getting to patients a lot sooner. So our focus is across the entire life cycle um, and really injecting and embedding AI into our processes. Thank you. So two very different challenges, two very different companies, <clears throat> but both using the Google product portfolio, uh, Vertex portfolio, to address that. Perhaps you can, because we've got, I'm sure we've got a bunch of technical folks in the audience. Perhaps we can get a little bit more technical. And Chris, could you, could you explain a little bit more about which bits of the portfolio you're using, perhaps what sort of data you're, that, that portfolio is working over, and um, whether there are any sort of third-party components that you needed to, to blend together? Yeah, um, so again, we, we leveraged Vertex AI, model garden pipelines, language. Um, yeah, our initial focus, and, and then I'll speak more about it in a second, but was to test and learn and to really get comfortable with these tools. And that was just through ingesting third-party data, such as PubMed. And as, you know, as easy as going out to PubMed and just doing a search, really just improving that and, and, and leveraging the Vertex AI platform has really helped us to improve that search capability. Um, we look at other, other opportunities as far as translation um, and really helping um, around the globe. I mean, the number of documents that we actually produce and send out to services um, and takes a couple of weeks to really shorten in that time to within days. So, you know, those are just some, actually some quick wins that we actually went after and tackled uh, for us to just start to learn and, and get comfortable with, with the uh, platform. Thank you. Mar Marcus, what did it look like in your world? Yeah, for us, um, I mean, a very important part of the platform that we are, uh, that we are partnering up with you guys is uh, the data, um, the data works that has to be done and the um, regulatory uh, work. So basically, uh, when we're talking about data, we're using tools like BigQuery, like uh, the healthcare API, and for the developing of the model, the full stack in, 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 uh, in uh, Vertex, uh, Vertex AI is available for us and for our customers, of course. Um, and uh, very, very special, of course, is the uh, Gen AI piece in Vertex AI. So we're using um, the Gen AI piece as a foundational layer on our platform so that we can um, accelerate research, uh, document creation, um, digital assistance, and especially also knowledge management in projects. Um, that tech stack um, is complemented then by uh, buyer services. Basically, all services that we use in clinical, in clinical trials, um, we can translate or translate it actually one-to-one -one into the digital world for AI production. Yeah? So the data services, um, the data um, transfer, the data QC, um, um, the uh, data annotation, uh, data labeling, all of that comes with the rigor that Bayer applies in their, uh, in their clinical trials uh, and the clinical trial services for clinical performance evaluation itself too. Thank, thank you. And um, <clears throat> perhaps you can share a little bit with how far into the journey are you? Are you far enough through to see any sort of quantifiable uh, results or benefits so far? Or 
So for us, um, we have actually two digital platforms out there already. So there is, uh, or the one is out there since 2022, our Calendic platform. It's a platform for radiologists where they can actually go in on an app store and buy AI applications. So we are already selling that and, and, and helping the radiologists with that. Um, and the second platform I was talking about is basically then enabling everybody to produce um, AI that they either can deploy on our platform or deploy somewhere else. So that's the, the, the strategy behind that. That's a completely new business model for Bayer um, since, I mean, we can say from, from, from pills to digital services. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Chris, have you, do you have any results you can share? Or? Well, um, well, let me actually kind of back up a second. We're early in our journey. So, I mean, I'll be very honest. We started this journey nine months ago uh, just testing and learning. And uh, we proved such success that we accelerated the process. We formed a collaboration with Google. Um, within the past four months, we've actually uh, pick out, picked out six strategic initiatives across the organization that we're gonna drive forward uh, through drug development, which is to really improve those processes um, from writing uh, clinical study reports um, to creating informed consent, to basically creating plain language, commercialization, to helping our uh, patient services, our sales team to accelerate that. Uh, and then lastly, um, really going across the organization with enterprise search and enterprise translation. We're on right now the, the verge of creating platforms that will actually you know, enable us for the future. So even though we solve translation for one area, we're actually solving it for the organization. If we're able to you know, complete the clinical study report, we're able to solve that for preclinical. So a lot of what we're doing is a really an enterprise approach and building solutions that are actually going to carry us and help us as a small company to grow and evolve, and again, at the end game is to get product to patients a lot faster. So we're, I get nine months in, but I have to say we've made remarkable uh, progress, um, thanks to the, to the Google team and, and the collaboration we have with them. Well, it's great to hear that you're making good progress. And for, for folks in the audience who maybe are earlier in the journey or at the beginning of the journey, um, are there any kind of key learnings or surprises that you could share that, that, you, that would maybe stop other people ha having, the same, uh, yeah, having to have the same learnings? Yeah, I think the thing for us was we quickly tested and learned and proved success. And we quickly enrolled our executive team, board of directors, and un to understand where we're going with this journey and to really demonstrate the value. And on top of that, creating that roadmap very quickly our strategy, and then what is the focus? We're not looking to look two years. We're looking within the next four to five months to really be having uh, these, uh, these, the platforms available and producing results So, in a relatively short period of time. So fast forward, you know, four or five months from now, we've been on this journey then 12, 13 months. That's, that's our driver, and that's what we're, we're, where we're headed. And again, I strongly encourage test and learn enroll as, as, as many as your leaders as possible and really partner with, with companies that know this uh, because the challenge is, is finding talented engineers and organizations that can help you. And again, being a small company, that is important for us. So Marcus, you're a, you're a bigger company with more resources. Anything, anything different or learnings or surprises that you have? Yeah, actually I have two, two very important points. Um, that I want to share. Uh, number one is, let me give you another number, 80%. 80% or up to 80% uh, of the work, of the effort that flows into a model, building a model, is data work. It's data work. So it's, you, need, you need stringent data processes, data awareness. So the data work is super important. Don't underestimate that. Yeah, that's the first point. The second point is, you have really good technology. The technology is there you can use it, right? But you also need to challenge your organization. You also, you have to build the right organization around the technology. It's way faster, faster paced than anything else that we had before, especially for pharma industries, right? So 
the the organization has to change in their structure it has to change in um, uh, in their processes and what we have done over the past four years basically trans transforming into a what we call fast lean agile and transparent organization we call that flat <laughs> I like it I like it okay so uh, thanks for for sharing uh, sharing your journey and um, and the learnings.